Hi everybody, my name is Amanda from beautifulnursing.com and today we are gonna talk about COPD. So what is COPD? COPD stands for Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disorder. So what that is, it's an inflammatory lung disorder that obstructs airflow to the lungs. So COPD is usually caused by a chemical irritant like cigarette smoking that damages the airways. The damage to the small and large airways in COPD can cause two processes or disorders within COPD to develop. These are called chronic bronchitis and emphysema. So what even is chronic bronchitis? Chronic bronchitis is a disorder of excessive mucus production due to inhalation of an irritant like cigarette smoke. The congestion in chronic bronchitis can be due to an increased number of goblet cells that work to enlarge mucus glands. This in turn can increase the amount of mucus production and cause edema and narrowing of the airways. So what are the symptoms that you would see with the chronic bronchitis part of COPD? So I have a fun mnemonic to remember that with chronic bronchitis, the symptoms are a blue bloater whale. So this stands for W wheezes, H for hemoptysis, A for a cough with sputum, so that mucus production, L for a large frame or someone who's obese, um, and E for edema of the peripherals. So the other part of COPD is emphysema. Emphysema is a disorder characterized by damage to the alveoli walls. All right guys, so pretend this elastic rubber band is my lungs. See how it's easily expanding and going back to its original position. So inspiration and expiration. So I'm breathing in, it's expanding, I'm breathing out, expelling air. So these represent healthy lungs on this elastic rubber band. Whereas in COPD, when you're exposed to this irritants, what's going to happen is something called proteolytic enzymes. So these scissors represent the proteolytic enzymes and they come in and they damage or, you know, in this version, we're going to cut. So these proteolytic enzymes, they come in and they damage the elastin or the elastic walls of your alveoli. So as you can see that there is no room for anymore for air exchange to happen, right? There's been airway collapse. So there's something called antitrypsin. This is an enzyme that usually stops proteolytic enzymes from coming and damaging the elastin of my lungs or alveoli. So with this antitrypsin, you're gonna see a decreased amount of that in COPD, so it cannot protect you from this uh, these proteolytic enzymes from damaging the alveoli walls. So what symptoms would you see with the emphysema part of COPD? You can remember this with pink puffer purse. So with this, this is pursed lip breathing and pink skin for P, uh, U, use of accessory muscles, R, respiratory rate increase, S, skinny, so you're going to have a patient that has cachexia, so muscle wasting and weight loss, and E, an expanded barrel chest. That is usually due to that air trapping, so the air cannot be expelled because um, there is no elasticity in the alveoli walls. So how do we diagnose and treat COPD? Diagnosis can be done with pulmonary function tests like the FEV1 or forced expiratory volume. You will see a decrease in the amount of air expelled due to narrowed airways and resistance to airflow. You can also diagnose with ventilation perfusion um, scanning, so with the VQ mismatch, um, ABGs, or serum antitrypsin levels um, to see if that enzyme is present. The treatment for COPD can be started with bronchodilators used to improve airflow and reduce air trapping by relaxing the bronchial smooth muscle. 
So an example of uh, bronchodilators could be albuterol or ipratropium. Corticosteroid therapy like prednisone can be used for acute exacerbations of dyspnea or difficulty breathing. Um, oxygen therapy can also be used in acute situations, but this requires close monitoring. So percussion, vibration, and postural drainage can be used um, to loosen and drain excessive mucus secretions from the respiratory tract. There is a higher risk of infection with COPD patients, so it's important to educate them on how it's very important to have their yearly pneumonia or influenza vaccine. If there is an infection present in the patient, um, usually the provider will prescribe some kind of broad spectrum antibiotic. As the nurse, it is important to educate your patient on smoking cessation, on the technique of using pursed lip breathing, um, increasing fluids to thin secretions, and finally just monitoring their caloric intake um, to make sure that the patient is getting enough nutrients to keep up with their metabolic demands. So in conclusion, the highest priority um, for the nurse is just to improve oxygenation in your COPD patient. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out beautifulnursing.com for free tools, notes, and advice to help you pass nursing school. Have a good day, guys. Bye.